don't believe that Pearl would have the same opinions if she was hot. Your reaction before I speak? I think Pearl, if you can make more money, you should always go for it. Having more money is always That's better not than before. not having, that is absolutely what I said. Okay. What I said was having more money isn't gonna fix past a certain point, the 70 to 85% chunk in your life. There are so many people from my generation that are working for tech companies and have all this money that sit at home, play video games, they have no friends, mm -hmm. they don't really talk to their family, but they're making lots of money because money is such a small fraction of what you need to actually thrive as a human being. Until you don't have it and you realize that- That's why I said at least why are you saying don't have no. it? I never said don't have it. If you're making 20000 a year, this speech is not for you. I want to talk about Andrew Tate. I would love to. Let's honestly have a serious conversation about this. I saw a tweet by you. Let me read it. so that Folks, modern women can't stand just pearly for many reasons. Um, I actually reasons, yeah. did a bunch of... You seem to get along with her on the show. I get along though. with anybody. I get along with you. That's but true. But I bet modern women can't stand you either. <laughs> Probably for good reasons. <laughs> Far, that is 100% true. Yeah. I will wear that hatred like a okay. badge of honor. But there was a critique of her um, that I said. There were actually a bunch that came up in my feed. I want to play this one, Deli. Do number two. We don't believe that Pearl would have the same opinions if she was hot. <laughs> and I'm willing to bet any amount of money on it. You're all thinking it. I just say it. Okay. Your reaction before I speak? I think Pearl is a pretty woman. I do too. I do as well. She yeah. was here. She, we did a show. But mm -hmm. what, what do you think of that lame criticism as far as I'm concerned that, oh, if she were hot, she would be advocating for promiscuity. If she were hot, she would be, you know, I think oh, it's super a, lame, a feminist. but everybody does this. How many, I bet if I went through your social media, I could find it. How many conservatives retweet things like, this is what girls on the left look like. And it's some 500 pound whale. It's like, this is what girls on the right look like. And it's some blonde woman with like two assault rivals or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, no, and I'm not saying that it's okay when they do it in a bad way. Because I'm saying it's, everybody does it's it. Just it's just It's lame. It's dumb. Yeah, it's dumb. But like everybody does it. And it's interesting too, because if you look at, I mean, it, if you look at like an Andrew Tate, for example, one mm -hmm. thing that you, I think can, we can all kind of agree on is that when you look at the women that he dates, they're not unattractive women, right? They're not unattractive women that are drawn to him. So the idea that you have to be, oh, if you're attractive, somehow you have to be drawn to feminism. If you're attractive, you have to be drawn to promiscuity is kind of absurd to me. Okay, we agree there. So we'll move on. Yeah. All right, let's go to... Uh, Let's go to 909 on number three. We're going to talk. This is from uh, actually just Pearlie's show. I love this this clip. It's about female leaders and whether a female leader would be drawn to a feminized man. Let's do it. I was not allowed to be a pastor. A woman yeah. has to be silent in the church. I think it's always been where a woman is supposed to be subordinate. And this is what's happening. These comments are just showing society's I mean, reaction the, to said, women. Help me. Like, Sorry? Help me. <laughs> In the Bible. Yeah. yeah but your man's help me. She'll know what he's doing. I know, about. but that's the thing. Like, why is she this little helper? Like, she's just supposed to be in the background. Why can't she lead? Why can't she do that? I you, think... You, you, again, to, to, to my point, a, a, a woman can. A woman can. The point is that that is traditionally a masculine role. And this often comes down to what both each each gender is, is attracted to. As, as I said before, mm. a woman can have that position and want to roll and even want to be the breadwinner and so on and so forth. And she can find a guy who will be happy with that and will be happy to assume that position. I'm just saying that's going to be a more feminized man. Okay, let's pop I mean, there's, I don't there's, think there's that. What do you think? I think the most feminized men are the ones that want little girls that have no careers, no ambitions, and no drive to do anything in life. Because I think they're threatened by anybody that's like even remotely as successful or as intelligent as they are. So uh, you brought this up before. We didn't mm -hmm. get to this part about, I don't hear anyone, I don't know who you're talking about when you when you reference like, oh, guys. The want, idea that like I would be threatened by a woman that's like a leader They're not or threatened though. They just said only a feminized man would it's be not, okay with that. It's not threatened. Okay, this is, is this it? is where we differ. Okay. It's not that they're threatened. It's just that that's not what it appeals to them because they want to be the leader. They want to take on that responsibility and they want someone next to them with an energy that's going to be more submissive. So it's not about threatened. It's just about preference. Like I want to be the man of the house. I want to provide and protect for my woman. I want to be the primary breadwinner. I want to do all this for you because I love you. And in turn, I want some things for you, which involve, you know, I want a woman who's going to take care of the home. I want a woman who's going to want to be a great mom. I want a woman who's going to prioritize that, those, those those aspects. So it's just to me, that's not, I'm threatened by that. It's just what I want. In the same way that I mean, a woman can say, I want a guy. Towards that relationship, yeah, that's fine. I guess. So, but that's not threatened though. Like I know, like you, I've seen mm -hmm. you go head to head with Sneeko, with if guys like that. If you are a high value 
value man, if you've accomplished a lot in your life, if you're achieving a lot, yeah. and if you live in a high power lifestyle and you're just looking for a submissive bang mate, that makes me look at you twice. It's very weird to me. But, that's, but I mean, if that's what you want, I think that's but fine. That's not, but when you when you could have somebody that is uh, capable of like complimenting your life in such a powerful way. But that way, does compliment your life. No, it doesn't. It's a hundred percent does. Re- you could swap that woman out with a million other women that could do the exact same thing. Why would that's you want that? That's not true. It because absolutely what, is but true. But those guys love those women. That's fine. And you dearly. can. Yeah, but that's they, great. But, but if you're a high value man, why would you choose the why bang not? made? Why would you Because you could have somebody that could do so Destiny, much more. That'd you, be so much Destiny, cooler. if you're a high powered man, mm-hmm. why do you want a female version of yourself? But why, why, would, you, why wouldn't you want why? somebody that can that can exist in your domain and thrive because on your level and be a part of what you do rather than woman, like, this is my silly little wife that no, stays at home and she makes coffee for me because that's all she's capable of that doing. That woman is complimenting your life. And that, by the way, those women who choose to be stay at home moms, those mm-hmm. women who choose to prioritize marriage and family, that's not because they're not capable of doing something else. A lot of those women are wicked smart. I have a friend who went to graduated from Princeton, opted for that lifestyle. So that's an assessment. That you can we, say that, but you're, you're living in both worlds now. Why? You can't say they're capable because this guy literally just said that like men are the leaders and you probably believe that biologically men are. So you no, can't say like, well, women could do it, but they choose not to. No, you, in your mind, you think that women are better suited for the motherly role and men are better suited for the leadership. So you don't think that most women could do it. You think that they exist on a different level for men I when it comes to I do absolutely think that most women could do it if they decided that. Um, this so you is think not, men and women are even a, in terms of what they could achieve I don't think like we're leadership equal. wise? I don't think we're equal because okay. we're not the same. So I think we have different strengths and different weaknesses, which yes, a lot for me is derived from biology when it comes to that stuff. But I'm not here to say that women are less than in terms of less intellectually and can't do this and that. And that's why they want to be, you know, Pearl uses the word helpmate from the Bible, which essentially means that you're there to provide support for your men. You don't want to necessarily be that person out there doing the grind. Sure. Again, well, hormonally. Just a bang mate. That's fine. But again, that's, that's great. Not if somebody wants is. to be that, that's fine. But yeah, that's, it is. That's, it's a bang de- that's a deeply disrespectful way. What's disrespectful? It's a person that stays at home, takes care of your stuff, and you have sex with them. That is it's not a what it is. A woman who decides that she wants to be there to support that family support how? is drive essentially is driving a lot of that ship. But what do you support, mean support, yeah, how? support how? For example, I'll give you a perfect example. Me. I stayed home for a year I, in between leaving Fox News mm-hmm. and doing this. I stayed home for a year. I loved that year. I put food on the table to nourish my family every single day. That brought me an incredible amount of joy. I took my kid out to do a bunch of stuff. I spent time with my parents. I took care of that family. I, I was there to provide guidance and support for my husband and ventures he was doing. I felt incredibly fulfilled that year. And that's coming from a woman who had sat on The View and had anchored roles and done all that. I didn't feel less than. In fact, I felt that when I was fully in my femininity in that year and I was fully providing that support for my family in a different way than I had ever had, I was more fulfilled than ever. That wasn't a reflection of poor intellect. That was a reflection of me kind of doing something different that felt right. So sure. and who's to, be, to say I don't that wanna, women can't do that? To be for the record, I don't want to make anything personal because I got to go. If it is personal, about, but, 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 but hold on, you're back here though because anybody could be a mom but that's not just what you want to do. Not anybody can be a mom. You want to be, well, any, most no, people. No, not anybody can on, be a mom. You can say that more people can be moms than can be Jedediah on Jedediah's show in Valuetainment, right? So even though I think you said earlier you have a three-year-old running around, you're back here in the studio because no, no, you're no. doing what you love. No, no, you'd no. love working that's this not, stuff. So again, yes, I, 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 exact, I am here. And yeah. I'm here three days a week, but I'm here three days a week, not five. And I'm here for one hour a day, three sure. days a week. Why? Because my kid comes first. That's, that's why. That's fine. But you're so, still doing like again, high value stuff. Why, you're but, doing but cool you're stuff. You're not just a women. random woman at home doing nothing and take care of the household. I'm not, you're working too. But me sitting here is doing cool stuff. But yeah. you know what? Me, when I'm at the playground with my three-year-old and I'm teaching him how to do something and he's learning how to ride a bike for the first time, that's cool stuff to me. That, I this, don't disagree. This that is, is cool not stuff. better than that. If anything, that is better than this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I, let's just but be you're, real. But you're still here. You can't right. do everything and for no, 24 hours no a day. Nobody's saying, spending 24 hours a day with their kids. No right? one is telling women don't work. No one is saying that. Where is that argument coming from anyone? Andrew Tate himself. I've seen because him on interviews Because you were saying that you didn't times. want a woman on the grinder. It sounded like you just wanted somebody that was no, in primarily in the household. What I'm saying is that women aren't driven in the same way for that grind. You like to ignore biology. I like to own the I'm fact that because biology. we are bio- yeah. biologically driven in many ways, the fact that I do have a hormonal cycle that's this, the fact that I did want to have a child and the fact that that did put me in a position where I, you know, you have a 
baby for a little while, you're going to be kind of, that's going to be what you're doing. You're sure. nursing that baby. You're exhausted. Pregnancy is not easy for everyone. That changes those realities. And I wanted to have a guy next to me who I knew would provide at that period of time. And mm-hmm. that's how a lot of women are wired. That's why they want the option to work, but they don't want to have to work. Sure. That's but the I mean, difference, like, do you think that, and again, we don't have to talk because you brought yourself up. So that's the only reason I'm yeah, asking. No, cool. you to, and yeah. I'm down to sure. be. Do you think your husband would be as attracted to you if after you had a kid, you're like, I'm done working forever. And I'm just gonna stay home forever. 100%. Then why, if you enjoy spending more time with your kid, if you enjoy spending more time with your kid than you do being because here, I'll and, tell if you, you and if you, and if you have a husband disappointed, why are you back here because at all? I am an, because I'm a privileged person right now and I get to come on here three hours a week and get a little bit of the best of both, both worlds. What I'm talking about is women who are in the grind, in the corporate grind, onto the fluorescent likes, 10 hours a day, that's what I'm addressing. But I bet you probably had to do that grind to get to where you are now, right? I doubt you, did you just yeah. get a roll on the view out of nothing? They were like, oh, you're no, cool, but come. I, no, but you didn't I, work hard to get never, there? I did work hard to get there, yeah. but I never had my priorities up my butthole where I was suddenly saying like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove love from the equation. I'm no, going to reject. Love. They do it though. No, when did you we, have your first kid? How old were you when you had your first child? I had it late. I had my first kid late. Because you wanted late. to work. No, you're the perfect that is feminist. Not, I actually like you way more than I thought. We agree. We're past point one percent. We're at like 10%. Do you know why I had a kid late? I mean, we could talk about me all we want. The audience knows this story though. It's going to get old to them. But I had a kid late essentially. I was in New York City. I didn't mm-hmm. want to leave my family and I stayed in New York City way oh, too your long. Masters, I remember. I think in I language a, or something, right? I got a master's in one year and left because it okay, sucked. Okay. Waste of time. Don't spend your time in a master's degree. We can disagree about that another mm-hmm. time. But And I had a baby late. And my advice to women is don't wait because you know what? If I had started earlier, I'd probably have another kid. But I'm 44 years old and I'm in my head always about that. Like, is it safe to do it now? All that kind of stuff. But I would have had more because the fulfillment that I got from having a child far out outweighed any fulfillment I got from any career or any other nonsense that Doesn't was going kind on of in the city in my Doesn't it feel a little bit like when you talk to some of these guys who are like 35 and they're like, yeah, you know, I've banged 150 chicks, but I regret it. I would have lived my life a lot differently if I got to have it. Like, if you're a 20 year old guy and you're looking at that dude, you're like, really, man? Or like when you're a poor no. person and a wealthy person is like, you know, no. all the money in the world, it just doesn't solve any well, of your problems, bullshit, guys. Well, that's bullshit because we know that no, money does that solve is, problems. No, past a certain point, money absolutely does not past solve your problems. Past a certain point. Past like 85K a year. Your not life is not. What gar- absolutely. That's, like, that's garbage. That is, as somebody that's been that on both garbage. sides of it, it is absolutely as true. As have I. It is absolutely true, okay? So you, you're living your. You're Audience, living your, don't believe that. You're That's living a lie. your best. Well, okay. If you're going to say like living in LA, eighty five thousand dollars a year. As long Where as you you've living? got your, as long in ninety five percent of places. Go in the United to New York States. City, live for eighty five grand a year, come back and talk what, to in me. Manha- First in Manhattan, first of all, in Manhattan, you could make that work because there, you can find flats there for two point five k a month. Yeah, you're going gonna to be, be living shitty. in a box this big. I lived in New York sure, City. But like, for, look, look, for at, look at what you just said. Life. I gave you a, a salary for mm-hmm. the entire United States. Like, what about Manhattan, the third most expensive place in the world? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so in the most expensive places in the how United States, you're probably going to need a little bit more, but my point still stands. No, your point does not stand. People shouldn't be content with mediocrity. They I never said for medi- people shouldn't measure mediocrity based on your salary. If you talk to any wealthy, successful person who's not trying to sell some weird matrix red pill shit, they'll tell you that like having money to cover your bills is nice. Money but is freedom. Mo- it's absolutely not. For money half of freedom. America that are obsessed with consumerism, money is more bills. Money is freedom. Money is more cars you, know you have to make payments on. Money is our houses that nonsense. break down on you. Not everybody, by the way, not everybody who has money spends money on nonsense sense like that. Money is freedom. Money is the ability to say, my company just put a mandate in place that I have to get this pharma injection. I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to leave this job. I'm going to pick my family up. I'm going to move to a state where I like. I'm going to buy a big old plot of land and we're going to be fine. That's what money buys. It buys freedom. It buys opportunity. It buys you not being dependent on the state or anybody else. That's important. That's why people should strive for success. So I'm sorry. I was in the reasonable range. You're talking about the, I have enough money to retire at 35 range. No, Because then sure, I agree. Having enough money to retire at 35 35 or 40, what's, that is better than having 80K a year, for sure. Reasonable. But what I'm saying is that from 80K to like $1 million, there's That's a whole bunch of issues. Absurd. There's a whole bunch of, you to ask any wealthy person about this and they ask will me, tell, I'll you. tell you. No, because you're, you're ideologically to committed to this thing. You will never I'm change your mind on it. Committed. Money doesn't fix your relationship problems. Money didn't help you have a child earlier. Money isn't going to help you fix problems with your family. Money, No, it absolutely doesn't. Money can introduce a ton of problems in all of these. It can help. It can hurt your relationships. It can hurt your relationship with your family. It can, it can cause added stress based on what you're managing for your career. There's so a ton everybody of should just strive for 85k a year and be happy with that. No, what I'm saying is that if you make 85k a year mm-hmm. and you feel like your life is horrible, it's not because of the amount of money you earn. It's in part because of the amount of money you earn. Okay. It's not fully. I'm not saying money's going to fix and heal all wounds. And I'm not okay. saying if you're in a shit relationship, by the way, that money's going to fix. There's a reason why every single popular rapper, you... musician, actor all complain about all of the added stressors that money, come along with what they do. And you know what? Not a single mo money, mo not problems. a single one of those people would hand their money over to you no, because they also have... know that if they get you get sick. 
You have money, you have opportunity to get treated by the best doctors in the world. You don't have to worry about that insurance. That's you can do whatever you want. You're in a bad relation. You want to have a Willis baby? Willis just got diagnosed with some late stage dementia. We can't be saved, I'm, right? I'm well, not, we all live in on the same clocks. So. I'm not telling you that money is going to be your ticket to uh-huh. oh utopia. That's not what I'm saying. But if you don't believe that money is your ticket to a better life and more options and more opportunity, even just the idea of freezing eggs, these things are expensive. A woman wants to have a baby. She's having fertility issues and she goes to the doctor and they say, oh, by the way, that'll be 30 grand. You have money. That's a lot of easier of a decision for you than somebody who grew up in poverty and stayed there. It's like, this you is like the most liberal you, American comment I've ever heard in my life. Why would you want people? Why would you want people to not just strive? I'm not saying it's make not it stri- your it's only. It's about figuring out how to live a good life without needing $50 million in every little new gizmo that's gadget under the sun. That's not your, it that's doesn't not ma- it, you. it does, It's about what is healthy for most people. Right, Amish people live their whole life. Don't think, not even use electricity. And I bet most of these people are fairly yeah. happy. There's a lot of you people that be. live. Li- no, I wouldn't. You'd have I'm no job. Fucking obsessed with the internet. Yeah, <laughs> You'd sure. Have no job. But but I'm not here telling everybody to do my lifestyle. But here, right? but isn't it a better way to approach this if we said, I'm not telling you how to spend your money, right? Like for example, me, I'm not into material things. I sold all my crap clothes that I got when I worked on TV. I'm mm-hmm. not into designer stuff. You see how I'm dressed. Don't even have a belt. I'm on. into. I'm, I'm not into it. It's yeah. not my thing. I'm not into cars. I'm not into any of that stuff. What I'm into is really good quality food. So I love to purchase from farms. Like that's my thing, right? So everybody's got their thing. My, My message is like, I want you to be empowered to live the life you want, the best version of that life. I want you to buy, be able to buy the home you want. I want you to be able to eat the food you want. I want whatever matters to you, I want you to be in the best position to make that life a reality. So I'm not going to tell you how much money that means, and I'm not going to tell you how that money needs to be spent, but I'm also not going to put limitations on your ability to realize your dreams. I want you in the best uh, economic environment, social environment, whatever it may be, to bring your dreams into reality. Is that not a better message than, oh, you could survive on $85,000 a year, you're prioritizing money too much if you care about X, Y, and Z. That's not up to me to decide for you. The, it's not up to anybody to decide. But you it's are just, deciding I'm it. not deciding. It's the recommendations based on the lives that I've seen people around me live. As somebody that's been very poor and as somebody that's been very wealthy, Mm -hmm. the reality is, is that if you, it's like a guy that's 5'9 saying he can't date any women because he's too short. If you're 5'9, you can't date any women because you're too short. There's other problems going on there. If you're making 80, 90, 100,000 a year and you're like, man, I'm miserable, making twice or five times as much is not going to make you any happier. It depends why you're miserable. If you're, sure. It depends why you're miserable. But generally, the problems that are present in your life when you're making 70, 80, 90, 100,000 a year. I disagree. The problems in your life there are not driven by money. I disagree. Relationships with your family, relationships relationships with God, relationships family, with your yes. community, Agreed. relationships with your children, with your friends. Maintaining all of these things can be done in a healthy, awesome manner, making, and I'm even, I'm on the high end right here, 70, 80, 90,000, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Truly, in most places, we go back to Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, probably 40, 50, 60,000, you could do this pretty easily. But it's just yeah, for, for you to say that like, oh, 80, 90,000, honey, not you're not true. gonna ever and be it depen- happy. Listen, like, it's, it, that's depen- just wild. it depends on the life you want, though. I, I, I'm not telling you you can't be happy. Okay, I'm 40, thinking 50, about a 000. life where you are spiritually and communally and uh, family fulfilled, I guess. If you're talking about flying to okay, Argentina to I'm go not, again, have matas on the beach or something, maybe something different. Again, but. I'm not going to tell somebody, if, if there are people who want to live in 40K a year and be happy, fine. But what I'm telling you is that if you make double that, if you make triple that, you are going to have more options. For example, and you're very comfortable, you have to understand we come from a different reality where you're very comfortable leaning on institutions, government institutions. You talk about, you know, the FDA. I've, I've heard you talk about these three letter words. I'm sure you have no problem with the WHO or that may be making assumptions, but I, I think you are, my, okay, big pharma like just oh, a yes. difference of a difference of comfort in terms of that uh-huh. you are comfortable with those institutions i'm not comfortable with those institutions yeah, so you probably drive a car you probably eat food you probably do yeah, all you, these things that require these third-party institutions no to sign i off don't on the actually i actually order my food directly from a farm that doesn't deal with any of these institutions to be the farm honest. doesn't have any type of regulations on it whatsoever i'm not saying Is any type possible? of regulation so but i do my grass the fed FDA, my grass finished my that's antibiotic fine, free and they can eat the bluest I kentucky my grass in the world honey, come, but at the end of the day the fda is still probably Probably signing off on what goes in the animals and comes out at the Actually, end of the day. Actually, the FDA has a problem with all raw dairy, and I consume that regularly. So you and well, I are in very still different allow boats. It happens, so, <laughs> but bottom line, do you see the difference though? If you are comfortable leaning I don't, on those I'm not going to talk to a guy earning fifty thousand a year. Listen, dude, you need to think about the CIA but, and the WHO. A, like they're coming after you, man. A, you got to start your own business. Why? Because, because the guy, because the guy, are, guy making fifty thousand dollars a year has got other stuff to think about because he doesn't have enough money to worry about first world problems like everybody making two hundred, two hundred fifty. 
obsessing over three letter agencies is like the most whitest Ridiculous. privileged thing that we can possibly do. Oh, now it's it about is race. A, it is a function of my identity that I can go online and say, okay, guys, we really got to talk about what's happening at the Department of Homeland Security. You think the average American is getting on flights? Do you think the average American is worrying about their, their, their phones being tapped? I think most people just want to be able to work a job, provide food for their family, hang out with their family and their community, I have the weekends off and do that. I think, I think that's what most people want. I think you underestimate a lot of folks in this country who want a lot bigger and better than that. And that's why if, if po people were content, again, you're, it's like a promotion of, and I find that communists do this all the time. I'm not saying you're a communist, but it's this promotion of mediocrity. And it's usually promotion of mediocrity by people who make a ton of money and who are in the elite and have options. The bottom line is you do have a lot. We both have, I, I'm not wanting or hurting for money. We both are in a position of privilege financially at this moment in time. And we both actually have the unique experience of similarly, we didn't grow up like that. I grew up behind the Staten Island dump. You didn't grow up with money. So we do know the difference between the two. But right now, today, we are in a position of privilege. If you want to, you have a child. I don't know how old. Uh -huh. But if you want to take your kid out of a school and put them in a better school, yeah, you can do yep. that. You that's all money. That is money. If you decide, for example, I let's don't say, disagree. If you're, you're making arguments that money can improve your life, I agree, but it improves your life in the margins. 80%, that big chunk that has to do with your relationship with family, relationship with God, relationship with yourself, these things are very lightly impacted by money, assuming you have enough to meet your you, financial needs. If you are worried about money, you're, mm -hmm. and that is a financial, uh, that's a stressor for you if in any capacity. If you're making 80K a year and you're worried about money, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> In 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 where where in Miami? ninety five percent wait, again you want in my do you know do you know what Miami is? Yeah, of course. But people live okay, in Miami. Yeah, I spent summers City. in people Hialeah. In do you Chicago. think you need eighty thousand a year to live in Hialeah? So, okay, Jesse, no. So if you want to say in Miami Beach, you know and the, in Brickell, in the okay. most expensive let's place in the United States, all the major States. cities off the map. All no, the major, not all the major <laughs> cities. <laughs> Even for New York, you said, well, what if you want to live in what Manhattan? There's plenty okay. of places in New York. You live in Jersey at really affordable rates. You can live in the Bronx or Queens for affordable rates. Okay, so you can go, find flats in Manhattan for go to Nashville and make seventy thousand dollars a year and support a family of four. You don't think you could support a family of four in Nashville, Tennessee? No, no, you're, you're misunderstanding what I'm okay. saying. Sorry, you I'm you can do it, Okay, but should that be your goal? No, you want to have extra money because that money gets saved then for your children, for your grandchildren. There is nothing wrong with aspiring to greater Never than you are. There's nothing wrong with it. Here, the, here's the, two, the only two points I'll make, okay? If mm -hmm. you can make more money, you should always go for it. Having more money is always That's better not than before? not having, that is absolutely what I said. That's what I fun. said was having more money isn't going to fix past a certain point, this 70 to 85% chunk in your life. It will. So if you're having to make even more, more sacrifices to that chunk of your life to get more money, which is what you just criticized women for, for being on the grind and neglecting their household. If you have to sacrifice parts said. of your life in order to make that more money, you are probably prioritizing incorrectly. Can That's we, why there are so many people from my generation that are earning 70, 80, 90, 100, 110,000 a year that are working for tech companies and have all this money that sit at home, play video games, they have no friends, mm -hmm. they don't really talk to their family, they're kind of isolated and alone, but they're making lots of money because money is such a small fraction of what you need to actually thrive as a human being. Until you don't have it and you realize that. That's why I said at least 70, 80, why are you saying don't have no. it? I never said don't have it. Because if you're making 20,000 a year, this speech is not for you, obviously. All right, let's go back to, actually, you want to talk about Andrew Tate? I would love to. We have to do this in a civilized way, Destiny. I know you're heated about this. I've seen some of the interviews, but I want to ask you about, let, let's honestly have a serious conversation about this because what I saw a tweet by you. Let me read it so that you have some ref. Deli, do you have the tweet? Um, yep. It is number 14. So you put this tweet out. You said he's, okay, somebody had written, said, I don't like Andrew Tate, but I don't think it's appropriate to celebrate someone battling cancer. I know Destiny is not celebrating it. Just saying this in general, I see a lot of it on Twitter right now and it's pretty gross. Agreed. Uh -huh. Then you said he's not battling cancer. This story, like all others that leaked from the Tate camp are completely effing fake. Okay, yeah. explain. Um, there's a lot of stuff that gets leaked from the Tate camp that's like half truth or completely fake. How do you know it's leaked from the Tate camp? <laughs> Because who else is leaking? The prosecution's not leaking this. How do you know? I'm just asking you, how do you know? How do you know where it's coming from? Be, be, I, I'm sorry, I didn't consider that the prosecution is leaking stuff from the Tate camp that- The prosecution's been leaking stuff for, they've for They've been leaking stuff that's favorable to their case. Why would they leak stuff that's disfavorable to their case? If they're leaking stuff that's disfavorable to their case, I don't know why all the well, pro-Tate people on the internet I'm, I'm are, are amplifying I'm it. Curious. I didn't even consider that for a moment. How would this, I'm curious yeah. though, This say, that, say let's, let's assume, let's just sure. say you're right, and this story about the cancer elite from the Tate camp, uh -huh. how does it help him? 
Uh, well, because the idea was that if he's got like some terminal cancer, because the message that was being pushed was that he's going to die within six months if he doesn't get it treated, was and he needed to be flown to Dubai for that treatment mm -hmm. that also doesn't have an extradition agreement with Romania, it would get him out of prison. That was like the story that was pushed there. So you thought that they leaked that and that that was going to pressurize the system to release him. Well, because it's all like they're all, everybody's happen? trying to win this like public opinion battle right now. Mm -hmm. And there was that doctor, the guy that... Is, is it like an aesthetician or something? Not a, not that, because that's like eyebrows. I don't remember. He does like cosmetic surgery stuff. He's a doctor, but in Dubai. Plastic surgeon? Like? Yeah, who's like a friend of like Tate, who was talking about how he'd done this diagnosis and he had like terminal fucking some leukemia. Or so something we read the reports. Essentially, mm -hmm. it said that there was a there was what looked to be a mm -hmm. malignant growth in his lung. We read through the, it didn't say that it was malignant. It said mm -hmm. that it looked that it could be that way. He needed additional testing. There were certain appointments that had been made to follow up, whatnot. We have since found out, audience, just to update you, that it's not cancer, that Andrew actually did go in, have that biopsy, this, yeah. and it turned out that it was not cancerous. But, so, and I initially said- And the doctor said, that was involved had pictures hanging out with Andrew Tate in early 2022, and he's since deleted those from his Instagram. But. So I, I can understand why if if he did in fact have cancer, I'm grateful that he doesn't, I don't want uh -huh. anybody to have cancer, but if he did in fact have cancer and this was a means whereby they said, okay, this guy's in jail, he could potentially have a fatal result of not getting the proper treatment. We need to get this out there so we can put pressure on the system to get him the proper testing. That would have made sense to me as a leak, but it doesn't make sense to me that they would leak this only to then 24 hours later come out and say, oh, actually it's not cancer. It just didn't make me, that would be the Probably dumbest leak they, on earth. I mean, it was also really dumb that partial texts were leaked of those women saying, oh my God, look here, they are colluding to uh, fake that Andrew Tate was trying to keep them locked up. And then when the full texts were released, it actually shows the exact opposite message too, but... So talk to me about this case. What 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 do you what is your beef with Tate? The, problem, the issue that I have with Tate is that if we removed politics from this, if everybody wasn't so obsessively trying to make it a right versus left thing, every person, especially conservatives, will look at this guy and go like, okay, obviously he's a sex trafficker. It's just so obvious. Why? I don't see it. Really? Yeah. And I'm not I'm not a Tate. I'm not like a Tate. Okay, I just want to read quotes. Can you tell me what you think about it? Okay. Well, no, I don't. I don't want you to do that. Oh no, 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 no! no. I tell super you what. Wanna, you can take them out of context. No, no, no. The uh, full quote from his Hustlers University page. You can tell me you think this out of context, okay? I've been running a webcam studio for nearly a decade. I've had over seventy-five girls work for me, and my business model is different than ninety-nine percent of webcam studio owners. Over fifty percent of my employees were actually my girlfriend at the time, and of all my girlfriends, none of them were in the adult entertainment industry before they met me. Literally, that was my job. My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she'd do anything I say, and then get her on webcam so that we can become rich together. Whether you agree or disagree with what I did with her loyalty, submission, and love for me doesn't matter. Does Destiny, sound let, me, let me ask you a question, yeah. Destiny. If this, if, if this case is a sex trafficking case, uh -huh. why hasn't he been charged? Because they're waiting to finish their investigation. Oh, I like how you so, didn't respond to that entire thing. No, 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 way, because I don't know where that's from. It's from his I website. Don't know, it's from his Hustlers I don't know website. what came before. I don't trust like these you quotes don't trust that people pull. And that doesn't sound like sex we, trafficking. If you to want, me. like, we can, I have the full video of him talking about it on his own website if you want to watch it. That doesn't meet the standard. Okay, of sex so I just wanted to be clear that you guys don't want to engage with reality. No, no, that's just. You don't, you won't. These are his own quotes, his own things he said. This is what I'll say to you. If you have a case, they've been digging on this guy for 11 plus months, okay? They brought him and his brother into jail, they arrested him they keep delaying okay 30 days 30 days 30 days they have not charged him with they don't anything. have to charge him until they're ready to charge no, him. they have they 180 don't, days they don't to do have it. to yeah. under the romanian system which is deeply corrupt that's absolutely insane that could never nobody agrees with you that's fine that you think that it's um outrageous. in the united states i think you've got like seven to 30 days to charge or whatever in the romanian system it's longer you, but that's okay but you you can think it's corrupt but that's, so, that's your but opinion why, that's not a legal why, opinion nobody if, internationally agrees with okay you. so yeah. what happens if at the end of this there are no charges then he's then what happens and then and then your opinion is what that they didn't have enough evidence to press charges against him. Okay, so, but why Why don't they just, it's been 11 months. They've been digging into into videos, into electronics, into I don't know what other records they're everything. subpoenaing right now or, or how much more or how many tendrils this investigation has right now for why they're continuing to hold them before charging them. I don't know. Do you know? I don't. I just so think then it maybe sounds we should outrageous. Wait and see. How does it sound outrageous? Because maybe, why, don't we why just... would you, why wouldn't you, it, it's ridiculous. You've been digging for 11 months. You're holding two guys in jail over and over again, 30 days, 30 days. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even accept the security camera footage that showed girls going in and out of the that house security as camera evidence. Footage, first of all, you don't have to submit every piece of evidence so you, to the prosecutor you want. Secondly, that footage, so I don't think you've watched all of it. It is not the exculpatory footage you think it is. I watched you watching your show. What it shows is two girls coming out of a compound 
that a security guard is watching and then getting right into an Uber and going somewhere else. That's not freedom of movement. Then all the security camera footage is two girls that are standing so, right outside of coming with a with an armed security guard right next to them on about, a gate that opens and closes. What about all the girls? What about all the girls that made the accusations? And then we're shown in videos partying it up. What about the girls that I don't said? Understand. Part, what about a girl the, partying up? If the if the if the yeah. defense wants to bring that up as saying, well, look, they were partying, so they couldn't have been trafficked, which by the way makes no sense. So then you, they can do that in court, but that's not exculpatory evidence. That doesn't clearly show just because you were partying so doesn't you, mean that you weren't raped or trafficked. That has no bearing on, oh, on the so case. Oh, so it's a it's a normal reaction for somebody who's been horribly assaulted to then stay in that house, be half naked, twerking, walking around, partying. Say that they were, by the way confined to that area and couldn't leave while they have access to a phone that they're scrolling? Does that make any... I don't care if how you, you feel about Andrew If you followed anything about pimping, and if this was, by the way, if this was about Epstein or anybody else, you would say, oh, well, of course this is possible. But yeah, if you've looked into or read anything about it or seen anything... It just doesn't make sense to me. Because you, have, because you don't care to find the truth. No, i it watched, bothers you. I've it, dug, it completely makes sense. If you listen to any pimp talk about how he pimps mm. women, none of them will tell so you... Where's no, the hold on, let me finish my sentence. Go ahead. None of them will tell you that I had a gun to her head the entire time. Nobody pimps that way. It's not a you can't control people that way. The way that you control women through pimping is you find some need that they don't have fulfilled mm. and then you try to fulfill it. One of the ways that Andrew Tate did it was through love and relationships. That's one mm. of the ways he did it. A lot of women stay in abusive situations for a long time, even without being trafficked. How many women remain in abusive households for years or decades? For you to say that like no woman would ever That's stay in a situation like that. Like, it, it, sh- this is sex trafficking, but you're trying to make the claim that if they're being trafficked, there's no way they would stay. There's plenty of ways that they could stay, especially if they're but getting mindfucked by Tate. It doesn't, saying, it doesn't meet the standard of sex trafficking if you have free movement in and out of the house and you have access to phones and technology, that that's not what the allegations were. So the allegations okay. were that they couldn't mm-hmm. that they were they couldn't leave, that they didn't have mobility in and out of the house. That's not what happened. You so see here, on so the cameras that they they do have the ability to so go in and out of the house. Sex trafficking requires you don't see that that they are ever allowed to leave freely. And L- Andrew me, Tate and Tristan Tate and girls have all come on record saying that they weren't allowed free movement. So I don't know why you you're have, saying that you just have, because you oh, see somebody go in and out of the front gate where a security guard is so standing. So here's the thing. What about all the women that came out and said this wasn't happening? You're calling me a victim. I'm a lot of women you, that are I'm still not. in the industry or directly employed by him or have tattoos of him. I'm so not what? It, even you have a re- tattoo of somebody so you can't, she's not entitled to say her, her what's going on with her? Even if it was the case that these women weren't abused, which yeah. we don't know. But they were labeled as even victims. Even if it was, even if it was, because they probably are, but even if it's the case Why? that they aren't, even if it's the case that they aren't, yeah. th- they don't have any bearing on the rest of the case. What? In fact, in the Romanian criminal code, there is a specific carve out saying that the testimony of your victims cannot save you. So, but, but why are they being labeled as victims if they're on their own word saying we're not victims? I don't Why? know if that they doesn't sound like a deeply because corrupt system to it, you. It, it's it's you have to see what the investigation turns out. That's what, that's what, what you have that? to wait. So is it sure, so you read, believe? Okay, so wait, no, no, no. You said you said there's a <laughs> women that are coming forth and um, saying X, Y, and Z, and it's yeah. been proven. So why are their I, testimonies valid? I didn't valid? say anything has been proven. But why is that testimony valid? And you've got people coming out and saying that's not what happened. Don't call me a victim. I was not trafficked. I was there of my own volition. Why is that te- that statement not valid? That it just can be. That can be part of the defense if they get charged and they have to go to court and they've got to fight but over it. But they've already they've already come out and said your your what you're saying doesn't matter. It doesn't fit the talking point we're I, looking it, for. I hold on. I don't know what you know insofar as legal systems work. I don't care what somebody says in front of a camera. If they want to be sworn in and under oath, they want to testify in a criminal case about mm-hmm. what has or hasn't happened, then that's fine. They can do that. But for somebody to come out and say like, oh, I wasn't a victim, that doesn't mean anything. There are lots of abuse victims that say, oh, well, I wasn't a victim who are absolutely victims. They don't They're, have the evidence, Destiny. If they had it, they would have been more than happy to charge this you guy You don't already. know that. They have enough evidence right now to keep them um, under this You don't need any evidence to keep absolutely them. You absolutely do. You need evidence. You have to show to the judge that you have evidence that shows that there's a likely outcome that there's going to be charges at the end of your investigation. Mm-hmm. They don't have to charge them until they feel like they're ready to do so. And you, they have 180 days to do that. They 100% do, but if they already had the evidence, I'm just curious how much digging time you would need. Depends if they, on how much they find. So Neither of us obvious. know. Listen, you're reading quotes off the internet. You're like, it's right here. I'm reading this quotes is sex from trafficking. Andrew Tate. Right, and you're saying yeah. this is sex trafficking. So sure. you don't think that a, a court system would have just as much access to that to say, oh, here it is, sex trafficking, lock him up, that's it, charge him, let's get into no, they're, because they're, they're seeing the same thing as you and saying it doesn't meet the standard. That's not that's true. You happening. don't know that. 
Of course it is. He would have been charged already for that. That's not true. The investigation might be sprawling. They mm, might have dug okay. into one girl's thing and then they say, oh, he also committed tax fraud. Mm. They might see tax fraud. They go, oh, he's also committing fraud in financial institutions. I can't speak to- They might to do financial institutions. They might say, oh, actually the way that he runs his casinos is actually really fraudulent. Too. I can't speak to that. That's fine that you can't, but you are right now by saying I'm they should not. have charged him. I'm talking about say, these charges from these girls. When you say they should have charged him already, you're saying, well, they must be done with their investigation. You don't know that. So I don't know why you're saying that. What I don't I'm know that. To you so you wait for their investigation to finish. been digging, if you had dug for 11 months into Epstein, you would have found plenty. You would have found what was the, it, it, you, if you're digging into somebody's stuff for 11 plus months and you don't find anything that comes forth enough for you to say, charges today. Let's charge him today and we'll continue this investigation. The investigation you can't doesn't charge sh- and continue an investigation. You might run into weird double jeopardy stuff. You might lose okay. the ability to. Let's see what happens. Have you ever watched, have you ever seen The Wire? Uh, no, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, this is, it's such an obvious thing that I don't it's believe. It's not obvious. You're not, it, no, no. It's very obvious. It's if not. I, if, if it was if so I'm obvious, it wouldn't be handled like this. It's so obvious. It just isn't because you're so politically partisan I'm on this not, issue. Listen, you are. You I absolutely don't, are. I you don't, absolutely are. I don't know them. I've never interviewed them. I have no personal stake in then this you, whatsoever. Then you should be able to understand this statement is very simple criminal procedure. That when you begin an investigation, mm-hmm. you might find chargeable offenses early on. Mm-hmm. It sucks to charge immediately because then you lose the ability to continue an investigation. If I go and investigate some kid on the corner of the street who's someone crack and I found out, oh my God, I got dead to rights. I got a camera with him selling crack. But then I've got a video camera talking to another person. I might not want to charge him because I might want to see who this other person is. And when I dig into that person, maybe it gets to the point to where this guy's like taking money from politicians. Mm -hmm. And I've got a whole drug ring built up where I can start charging crimes, but I might not want to do that because I want to see where the money goes. This is super common when you're talking about these huge investigations. You don't just find what they're going to charge immediately. That's so dumb. But but if you're going to look at this objectively, doesn't it concern you that a lot of the, the camera footage wasn't submitted into the files? Like, why not? But why not? Why not? Just say, you know what? There's footage outside his house. Uh-huh. We're going to look and see. Are there girls going in and out? These girls are claiming that they were kept against their will. We're going to submit it into the file. We're going to look at it. It doesn't, doesn't concern you that a refusal to even go there, to even submit that into the case file, to even look at it could be a sign of a corrupt system that maybe has some direction that they want this to land on, that they're a little scared to kind of look at what may potentially be in Tate's favor. If they had been more willing to look at that stuff, I would be more willing to look at this as a fair trial that's underway look at everything talk to the girls if a girl tells you she's not being trafficked why are you then releasing a statement saying oh she's uh brainwashed sorry so she's a, brainwashed um, yeah. so she can't a, make her a, own assessment there's a really good statement and it's the statement or the the quote is if you don't know how anything works everything is a conspiracy the prosecution does not have an obligation to submit every piece of positive evidence for their defense when they're talking to the judge mm-hmm. what they have an obligation to do is if they come across something that is clearly exculpatory they are required to submit that or take that into account when it comes to dealing with the whatever charges yeah. they're trying to assess. That CCTV footage is not exculpatory. All it shows, I was shocked when I saw it the first time because I thought I was going to have to be like, okay, yeah, maybe this is blah, blah, blah. It further reinforces the idea that these women are under lock and key. The only thing you will ever see is two women coming into a driveway area, a gate opening, I watched it. an armed security guy right here looking at them. They'll come out and they'll grab a pizza and then they'll go back inside. And then people like you are saying, Look, they had freedom of what movement. What about the girl Despite that- the fact that Andrew Tate, Tristan Tate, and some of the girls have all said, no, they're not allowed to leave the house. And some of the girls said that's completely untrue, and they were labeled as being brainwashed, and their the ones testimony with the and their statements. Of the Tates, does, who cares? Who still work in the industry? But who, who have everything financially to that, gain from Tate getting why out? Why does that not make their statement valid, though? They're saying I was not. There trafficked. are literally text logs leaked right now showing the Tates trying to get women to make these statements to let them get out. What about the women who who I don't know if you saw? Did you see the Vice documentary? Yes. Okay, so what about those women that they? Did did you find that to be horribly biased? Just so I know that you're of sane mind. I mean, Vice has a slant that they want to show the story on, of course. But the what women, do you mean by horribly the, biased? Well, the women that they showed in that. What about when it? when they showed that these these were these had already been submitted to the police, and the police had looked at it and said, "There's there's no there's no evidence here. This That's is not, not this is not supported by evidence." What the police said was there wasn't enough evidence to charge a crime, which yeah. in the, the vast majority of rape cases is true. It's very hard to get a, oh, a, a, a okay. station. So let's to, just assume he's a rapist I then. Know. 
never, right. ever said that. Do you see how partisan you're being? No, it's Here, ridiculous. Let me, let me be clear. This it's has ridiculous. been my position the entire time. My position the entire time is let the legal system work as it will. Mm-hmm. And you're the one saying, well, why didn't they provide exculpatory evidence? Because you don't know the process. You're so, the one saying they had freedom of movement. Even though if you look so, at the camera, Destiny, they don't. there's so many holes. There's the there's women no who holes. made the charges and then they're in the house partying on their phones, talking this, that. Then they take a giant trip. I've already trip. talked about the partying on the phones. It doesn't prove anything. You're right. You know what? If somebody had been horribly assaulted and trafficked, they would then be not only conspiring in text messages, but they would go on a lavish vacation together, smiling and put a bunch of photos on Instagram because they'd be in such a good, positive place as a result of their experience it's part of being of their trafficked. Business. That's utterly ridiculous. That is not how <laughs> scarred women from okay, assault me, behave. I'm that so is curious what you think. Ridiculous. I'm so curious what you think of this. Okay. So Andrew Tate says, uh, a girl might say, oh, I don't want to do the webcam business. So, okay. I know you don't want to do that, but listen, come, let's have a meeting and let's talk about it. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. But let me explain it to you properly. In fact, I'll bring one of the girls who works for me. You, your bottom bitch, the new girl, you go out for a fucking nice dinner. Your bottom bitch is the one who does the setup. You don't do the setup. The girl has to hear it from the bottom bitch. And this is where your bottom bitch has to be trained. And that's why it's so important to have a good first girl. Mm -hmm. This doesn't sound like trafficking to you? It doesn't meet the standard of trafficking where they would have charged him the already. Sta- no, you're, Does it sound? Wait, do you no, understand wait, that what you're, you're just saying is wrong? You say it doesn't meet it so they would have charged him already. They could have enough evidence okay, for him to be in traffic. Let's see what happens. That's my position. Let's you're the one saying happens. it's all corrupt. Let's I think we happens. should see what happens. No, what I'm, I'm not... Listen, I, I don't have any inside like I don't know what they were doing with their finances but you're the one in here saying, saying that, that like I'm the, saying the system is, is corrupt what I'm saying is at this point the, well the, the Romanian system at large I believe any system is corrupt that is able to hold somebody for month after month after month without charging yeah them. but that's not a legal so, opinion that's your personal feelings on it which is fine but you present these things as like legal like no, oh it's a corrupt no. legal like you just feel like you don't well, like it. it it is corrupt it How is, is it corrupt? corrupt because it's it's disgraceful that you're not char- what what why you're you're, you're submitting- why do you really want to know the reason reason the reason why is because places like romania do have a history of corruption and when charges mm-hmm. like these are coming down the pipeline people just flee the country that's why that's the reason and romania has so a history of this happening them. for up to 180 days if you can prove to a judge month. if you can prove to a judge that i have a good evidence to hold them here had, then if they had anything on him they would have charged the guy you already. Say, that's the and fourth listen, time you said, just to be clear, true, you keep saying that it is not true. true. You can hold them with enough to charge them and not charge you them can, yet. You can. Yeah. What so, I'm saying so what to you're just saying is not true. You're, are you going to repeat it again? That if they would, if they had enough, they would have charged yes, them I already? I believe that that would have happened but, already. But what if they are finding more Let's in their see investigation? What Let's see what happens. Again, I'm not, I've said repeatedly on this show, I don't have any insider information on this case. I don't I don't when have Tate any access to that. When committing tax fraud, when he talks about stealing money from his girls, that doesn't bother you at all? My opinion on Tate has been uh-huh that he's a net positive for men when it comes to getting your shit together stealing lying it, no, cheating no. scamming their whole business they talked about scamming men for money i know that's a, that's inspirational for men I, he talks about working with the mob to run casinos is that inspirational that's for not men what i'm talking about that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is the tens of thousands of men who've been positively impacted by him telling them get your life together oh you're depressed you're in control of your own fate get into the gym get some exercise run your own life be able to be financially stable be able to support yourself what does it say Don't about conservatives on... that they need andrew tate a scammer no, not... that runs casinos for that role model to Listen, tell men to go to the gym you, and respect you, yourself you said when we started mm-hmm. that uh, I, I don't remember what you referenced that you, I said, I'm sure you'd be able to find something good that, that you, you know, blah, 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 blah. I can find what something I'm good that Hitler you, said. I can find something good that I'm everybody talking, said. What I'm telling you is that when it comes to his messaging for men, I believe that he has been by and large a net positive. What I am not able to assess is what went on with his casinos, what went on this. All I'm saying is that the way this investigation has played out, there's too many holes that haven't been acknowledged. There's, there's not a single too much hole, stuff to that has not been looked at. Not a you single thing say, that hasn't been looked at. You can at. say that they have the right to not submit the security That's footage how from the house. Same thing in the United States. You can say that, but why? Why? You should, because it's not the prosecution's person. job to provide the defense's defense. That's what your defense is for. The job of the state is to prosecute in good faith, meaning okay, they have so to submit you, exculpatory evidence. It's the same thing in the United States. You see no issue here. I see a bunch of issues here. We'll see how it plays out. So you think in every legal system around the world, you think that the state should be working for both the defense and no, the prosecution? I, I, I don't understand why the case files don't reflect the accurate statements of the women. I don't care that she has because tattoos they, of they, Andrew Because Tate. they don't what think do that, care? because a woman can't determine if she was trafficked or not. Oh, so who can? some psychologists that they roll in and they say oh by the way you're brainwashed but you're not that's the point of an expert witness do you want to get okay. rid of those in courts too do you not they? disagree who are an they? expert who witness are is people? oftentimes somebody that the court has deemed has qualifications right. to make statements person? outside of things who is that psychologist that came in and evaluated this in fact jasmina said i never stood in front of a psychologist she doesn't need to 
So how did they determine that she's brainwashed? Because the point of an expert witness is to take some facts of a case and extrapolate. Oh, okay. Do you, that's what an expert that, witness is. Listen, a normal a, witness is brought in to testify okay. to their own experience. So an expert know, witness is brought in so to extrapolate just, from facts of a case. That's what an expert decide. witness is in the, in the case of the court of law. Yeah. Let's just decide now that some of the women were telling the truth and some were lying based on our own predetermined idea of how this should play out because that seems to be what's happening. It doesn't I make any sense I don't think you understand that the witness testimony is not relevant for this charge. Okay. If I can find you a 12-year-old girl that says she consents to having sex with a 30-year-old man, would you care what she says? That's a minor. That's a different I didn't story. Ask, no, no. This is, but why, why, wouldn't you care? why wouldn't you care? Well, that's a minor. That's different. We're not talking about a grown woman here. What the answer, the correct answer, if you're scared to give it, the correct answer is that she's not in a state of mind or able to consent to that relationship, a statutory rape. Mm. A woman can't consent to being sex trafficked. So even if she says that like, oh, well, I wasn't or it didn't happen. If there are messages that show that, oh, well, when Andrew Tate brought you down, he was promising to marry you. Let's he say, said that he loved you more than listen. anyone else in the world. It doesn't matter what she says after the fact. She was brought there under terms of um, deception, which is what is needed to prove sex listen, trafficking. Listen, all... Let, let's see how, how it turns I out. I agree, we should. Let's see. And but maybe you're the we'll one calling the system it. corrupt no, no. the entire I, time of the I, way. I think it's worth, the system's I don't working like, fine. I don't think the system's working fine. Okay. I, because listen, you don't like expert witnesses no, and you don't like I, I prosecutions? Don't think there's too many loopholes in the there's stories. There's no, you haven't thought of a single too, loopholle. I just repeated them to you, but okay. I want to close. Deli, do we have more? Deli. I just want to make sure we get to What kind of super chats we got? You got a couple of super chats. Bring them in. Let me, let's do the super chats first. And then I just want to do one last thing before we close. Oh, Deli, you sent me these. See, I was so immersed in conversation. Uh, let's see. We have, okay. We have Mr. Renegade. Uh, this debate with destiny is just a warm up for what you're going to encounter on the whatever podcast. You know, the whatever podcast. Uh, oh yeah. I almost it's did hilarious. it a couple days ago. Right, it's are you going to go so out there? Funny. They asked me to go out there. Um, I think it would be hysterical me against a bunch of modern women, but, um, I don't like to leave my kids. So we'll see, but okay. it's fun. It's a funny podcast. Will destiny appear on rich Cooper's channel? He's been invited. I don't know who that is. Maybe rich Cooper. I don't know anybody in this side of the world. Why? Oh, okay. Okay. That would, by the way, that would be fantastic. You is, he, should. is he in the studio? Um, he's not. He, no, he, I don't know where he is. He does, I think, remote. But that would be an interesting exchange back and forth. He's kind of like a, I don't know, maybe like a Rolo type. Rolo Tomasi. Have you, uh, have you d debated Rolo? Um, would I would, but he's a debate. fucking coward, so, but we'll see. All right. It, uh, last stop, three... Oh, man. Last stop, three. I don't know what that means. I'm not condoning anything oh, that was said here. Oh, less than three is like a heart. If that's what it says. Can Destiny elaborate on why he's comfortable with polyamory and if there would be long-term effects on society if this became the norm? Um, I'm comfortable with it personally because I am a fuckboy and I like to fuck around and my partner generally needs the same freedom that I have. Otherwise, I think it's an uneven relationship. Uh, I don't know if it'd be stable in a long term. Like if we decided to have like a family or children, I don't you know have, if we would. Don't you have a child? Um, I do, but it's with an ex-girlfriend. Okay. So it's not, okay. So would you change if you, that's interesting. If we, like if we wanted to have a family, I probably, I would imagine just because I don't know if you have the time to, <laughs> to manage all that shit. Do you think you could change given that you've been living this way for so long? Do you um, think that would be something you could do? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe. Can I ask you something? You can ask me whatever honestly, you want. About, you, honestly. About your relationship. I'm very curious. Yeah. Yeah, ask away. I would love to have actually your uh -huh. girlfriend because I don't want to ask her. She's not here to represent herself. My wife, but Your wife. Yeah. So how do you do that? How do you, I mean, it's one thing for you, I think, to say I need the sexual freedom, whatever, but you're, let's say you're hanging out with your wife on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You're intimate with her. And I'm guessing you have a good sex life, whatever. And then on a Wednesday, she's out sleeping with somebody else. How does that not gnaw at you in some way? I just, I'm personally, I'm just not like a very jealous person. But there's different people that have different- that's odd though? Yeah, probably a little bit, yeah. But I, that's why I said before, I don't recommend my life stuff for everybody. Is this somebody you think you would want to potentially, you're married, so you would want to potentially have a family with? Like this yeah, is somebody you- Yeah, of course, she's you, my wife. She's like the coolest person I know, yeah. So to me, it's like there's something, don't take this word the wrong way. Take it out. But I- yeah. I often use the word when I when I talk about women who are hyper promiscuous and mm -hmm. women who don't pair sex with emotion. I use the word broken, and what I mean by that is that a something wife, in yeah. their system uh -huh. is kind of like it's off. Like it shouldn't be that way. I feel like women shouldn't be inclined to behave that way. Mm -hmm. As a guy, I always think of men as quite territorial by nature, and that guys oftentimes should be wired, or vast majority of cases would be wired to be bothered by the idea of their woman being shared in any way or their woman going off and being intimate with somebody else. Yeah, I guess like um, for me, I just like, I know the value that I provide in a relationship. I don't think my wife's going to leave me for anybody. Um, if she doesn't, I find another wife, I guess. Is there but the, a, um, in terms of like jealousy and whatnot, I just don't feel very jealous very often. And there's like a lot of sexual experiences that I still enjoy chasing. Um, and I wouldn't have any respect for myself or my wife if she stayed home while I was out messing around with other people and she wasn't allowed to do anything. It just wouldn't make any sense to me. Who do so. you think <clears throat> is responsible for that paradigm in your relationship? For 
example, if you turned around tomorrow and said to her, I don't remember her name. Mm-hmm. You, Melina. Uh, Melina. Okay. If you said Melina, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to be with you. Do you think she would jump on it? I have a, I have a hunch she, that she might. She would probably. Yeah. Okay. So what? But, is uh, well, I don't actually hold on. I shouldn't say that. She's gonna fucking kill me if I say that. We there are our relationship is complicated. I'll say that. Um, I think we both enjoy messing around a lot. I even outside of sexual relationships, I have a proclivity for very dramatic, insane turmoil. I like, I love that in my life. Um, on my stream, there's a lot of crazy people. When I travel, there's a lot of crazy people. I think you commented before I'm going on. I think I've got like 7,000 jihadists outside that are probably waiting to murder me because that's of my true. tweets earlier. Yes. <laughs> so that's, this is all like really fun and exciting for me. I think sometimes for her and God bless her for even remaining with me for the four years she has, it can be hard to deal sometimes with the crazy shit that I'm inviting in my life all the time. Um, that's not unique to like sexual or professional relationships. So sometimes for that, she'd probably like, if we could like chill a little bit, that'd be fine. But she's dealt with me so far. And uh, I mean, and she's still hanging on. So, and what is your sexual? You have some, like you, 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 you only sleep with women, but you're intimate with men. It, explain to me. I'm, I like, don't I'm like half. It. I'm half by. You know. What does that mean? I mess around with them a little bit, but I would never like date a guy. But you do everything else but date them, but take them seriously. Not everything else, but I don't know how like deep you want to get into like if well, it's like an after hours like plug talk with Jeb. And- <laughs> do you ever? Do, do, is there ever been an instance where you and your wife are like sharing the same guy, or is there? No, some- that'd be fun though, but no, because it's really hard to find like bisexual guys. Most guys are like pretty gay. Do you entertain the idea that somebody could fall in love with somebody else, and that could um, be a big problem? I'm a really cool guy. I don't think she's gonna fall in love with anybody else. But if she does, then I'll just find a different, more compatible girl. Fuck it. Okay, so somebody would hear that and say she's replaceable to you, and that's why this whole dynamic. If she was works. replaceable to me, I would have replaced her by now. I super love her. We get along like super well. I don't think either of us are going to find. She's a really unique person. I think I'm a really unique mm-hmm. person. Um, just because we have sex with another person, I don't think either one of us is going to find somebody who's like, oh my god, I'm replacing you with this person. I don't think that's going to happen. But what do you say to like a critic who would say he's just not with somebody that he wants to give himself fully to, and that's why he's distracted. He's with the wrong girl. There's a lot of people that have their ideas about how re- the thing that annoys me the most is that like I understand monogamous relationships and I think that's cool and there's something beautiful there and that's awesome and if people want to do that I have full respect for that not only that I would probably say that like 98% of people should be in those types of relationships that's fine Um, but a lot of monogamous people have ways of doing things that they project onto me and all I can say is that like the projection is not true that either like I'm secretly jealous or I'm getting cocked or she's getting cocked or she's secretly jealous or whatever Um, the reality is is that like all types of relationships have types of jealousies Um, you know maybe uh, ours involves fucking other people other people involved just talking to co-workers right like it's like monogamous people don't take this as an attack on monogamous people because i'm not but monogamous people say things like to me like oh my god like your relationship sounds insane i can never do it but then i look at a lot of monogamous relationships and a wife will be like i don't like your new female co-worker you need to move offices or like a husband will be like you went out yesterday with like some friends and there was a guy there and mm-hmm. i think you'll sleep with them if you have the chance because you're not allowed to go out with those friends anymore mm-hmm. and it's like damn there's like a lot of jealousy in monogamous relationships too um i think people should try what they like to try do you do talk do, but, do you hmm. do you do you have a rule in your house like we don't talk about no we're other? totally I would never do that like we have to both be comfortable with it I would never be in a relationship where it's like okay we can hook up with other people we can never talk about it because that sounds like a disaster waiting to happen we're mm. like I'm so upset I don't even want to think about it like we're both like pretty sexually open people kinda... why do you think though if you had I'm curious if you were to have a family that mm-hmm. that would need to change is that some acknowledgement that the stability of monogamy is ideal for family and society at large or the, what does that mean to you? The thing that I would be careful about is um, I think that having parental roles are pretty important mm-hmm. and like, so like, it, like if you had like two parents and they like on weekends or whatever, the kids were at grandma's and you went out and did like swinger parties or shit, I think that'd probably be fine. The worst things I'm thinking of in terms of like poly stuff or open stuff is like having a bunch of like strangers like walking around the house would probably never be okay. Or like taking my kid and introducing to like, oh, there's another girl that I have sex with sometimes. Like here's your, like that would be a really weird setup. But these are things as a single parent, like mm-hmm. I already kind of deal with. Like his mom has to be careful in terms of like uh, what kind of guy do I introduce to Nathan? I've got to be careful in terms of what kind of girl do I introduce to Nathan, uh, my son, because we're trying to be respectful of like each other's parental roles. But um, yeah, when I say that, I'm not sure if the poly stuff would work for like a family. It's, it usually just comes down to like a matter of time because kids, especially in the first like six years before they're going to school, I'm sure you know this right now, are yeah. very fucking time consuming. Yes. Um, yeah, and I just, old, I don't know yes. if the desire would be there for, and then like if she's working with child, if she's got like this, you know, anywhere from one to 12 months of not wanting to do anything sexually after uh, pregnancy, I don't know if she's gonna want me going out like fucking a bunch of girls while she's like taking care of a kid or anything. So I, I feel like logistically it probably wouldn't I don't know if ideologically I've opposed to it, but it seems like it would be a lot of trouble. I have one more topic I want to get to. But before, I just want to ask you, like, 
I don't even know how to word this appropriately, Deli. I'm not going to lie. By the way, mm-hmm. folks in the chat, let me just say this. If I'm not getting to all of the chats today, we got flooded. It's hard to kind of do this and do all that. So I apologize. I will I will make it up to you next show. Let me ask you this question about... Um, uh-huh. Whether the exculpatory evidence... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. It's about emasculating men on okay. television. I don't know how you feel about that, but this was an interesting article. This is one thing I want to do, Deli, before we close today, because I think it's an interesting topic uh-huh. um, about male leads in films. I'm trying to get it for Deli so he can... Deli, do you see that one? Yep. Okay, cool. CBR.com says, that, do you know Dungeons and Dragons movie yeah. by at all? I don't, so I'm going to pronounce I've seen like trailers things. for it, but I don't think it's so just be yet. prepared. I'm going to pronounce everything wrong now, but the, <laughs> they intentionally- you got Dungeons and Dragons right, I got so. that part <laughs> right. They intentionally emasculate the leading man. They proudly say this, the writers. It says the Dungeons and Dragons movie's writing team revealed they intentionally emasculated the leading man in the film and put the woman on the front lines. They spoke with Variety and they discussed how Michelle Rodriguez's Hole of the Barbarian and Sophia Lillis's Dork, the- Druid tend to engage in the front lines of battle compared to their male party members. That was not an attempt at wokeness, they say. I swear to God, it wasn't. We like that Holga is the bruiser that does the dirty work for Edgin, and he doesn't like to get his hands dirty. We also love emasculating leading men. It's an open admission that they like to emasculate leading men. One thing that I've noticed in consumption of media, whether it's you know TV, movies, whatever it is, I talk about this a lot, is there seems to be a continued emasculation of men that happens on screen. Oftentimes, you'll see the fat guy, the lazy guy, the guy in the marriage, like, um, you know, who who isn't doing anything right. He's outside, you know, eating a donut over the garbage pail, hiding from his wife. And I think about the impact that that has on men who are watching this at home and being made to feel like maybe they couldn't be a head of household, that guys need to kind of sit back and women are more capable, more competent. The women always seem to be in charge and competent and the guys always seem to be lost in space. That's what a really classic trope though, isn't it? Well, like if I think of yes. like, um, like even in shows where the men are really educated in the Cosby show, isn't it generally his wife that's like really kind of like got everything under control and Bill well, is he kind was of like a, a goofy. Doctor. He was, but he was still kind of like a goofy guy, right? Or in like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, um, mm. the father was very much like you know a yeah. go get it, but he was also like fat, and the wife was like very much like the scary kind of person in the household sometimes. So even when the husbands are like really educated, it almost seems like the wives play these really strong roles. Um, here, this is like a broad, there's two parts here, okay? This is a really broad thing that I have. Um, it's probably gonna trigger you. I'm not trying to trigger you, okay? I think that <laughs> women have done a really good job over the past 50 years, not just women, but like society's pushed women towards wearing all of these hats and assuming all of these roles that we traditionally thought women never could. We didn't think women could exceed and excel in school like they are. We didn't think that women could start to move into the jobs that they are. Um, we didn't think that women given access to reproductive control and family planning, everything would be as promiscuous and whatever as they are. Like women are able to do all of these things now traditionally that they hadn't. And they've stepped into these roles and they and it seems like they now whether we're happier or not happier, people debate over the surveys, but they're they're doing things that we thought they would never want to mm-hmm. do. I don't think a woman wanna work till she's thirty five. That's a man thing. But as soon as you give a woman some plan B or some birth control and some financial aid, she's like, fuck it. I actually really like my career and I really like traveling, right? Um but the issue then is that when we look at men, and I think that men are in this weird world where it's like, okay, well, my job was I was supposed to be the household provider. I go to work, I suffer there, and then at least because of that, I'm able to give a paycheck to a woman. Mm-hmm. And now I have like a family unit that kind of is built around this dynamic. But men have this huge identity crisis where women have assumed all these roles and men are like out here and it's like, okay, well, I'm working. And we even saw the woman say it in the, in the video earlier where she's like, I don't need your paycheck. And the guy's like, okay, well, fuck me. That's like all I have to offer. And men have this like huge identity crisis of not knowing what they can do. And on one end, you've got feminists that push feminizing men, which to some extent I think would be incredibly positive, but they don't ever actually push feminizing men in terms of like, let's make men more emotionally intelligent, more communicative, more empathetic in relationships. Instead, it's just a constant attack on traditional masculinity. Like, fuck the brave men, fuck the strong men. They just attack, 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 attack. Instead of ever building up like the more feminine qualities, they just attack the masculine ones. And then you've got, on the other end, you've got like red pillars saying, what you need to do is you need to be hyper ultra masculine. When the reality is, is that like, if a woman is working a job and she's got her paycheck and shit handled, um, like if she wants some ultra masculine dick, like you said, she's going to sleep with a top 20 percenter. You being more masculine isn't going to win that woman unless like a top one percenter. So I think men have a big identity crisis. It's like, where are they supposed to be? And I don't feel like they get good advice from anybody. Mm-hmm. But okay. Why do you think they leave those guys that you talked about, like guys who, you know, guys should be more feminized. Guys should be more emotionally intelligent. Guys should be all of those things. If that's true, then why do you see women repeatedly leave guys like that and go after the hyper masculine guy or look
look over that guy's shoulder toward the hyper masculine guy. See, I don't think women want any of those things. I do think they want someone who's communicative. communicative. Uh-huh. I do think they want someone who's respectful. I do think they want someone who's honest. Um, you enter a dynamic in a relationship. I think there's an expectation that you would fulfill whatever commitment that is that you both agree to. But I don't think women want feminized men. I think they want a rock, a sturdy rock. And when they ask for more emotion from you and you give it, very oftentimes it's a turn off. Uh, I just totally disagree. I don't think there's any data that supports the idea that women are like running away from feminized men. Um, I don't think that, I hear this thing a lot that if you show vulnerability to a woman that she'll leave you. But then I think back to that, to the early example I gave you, like if you show like, if you hug like a child or a cat, like women love you. um, Why are they sleeping with all the bad boys then? um, I can tell you why. Because they like confidence. Everybody likes confidence. But mm-hmm. I don't know if that's like a masculine or feminine trait or just like a maturity trait. But I think that w- when you think of like, and it's so funny because it's such an easy thing to disprove. People say like women love bad boys. If I could show you like a 250 pound guy that like deals drugs and plays League of Legends all day, she's not gonna be attracted to that guy, right? right? But she's attracted I, I know, to his, I it, yeah. In order to thrive in those bad boy situations, usually you have to be very confident, confident. very sure of yourself. You usually have to be pretty charismatic. You have to have good conversation skills. But you, you, have al- some, you also have yeah. to be somewhat authoritative. Like I, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I view a femini- I agree. I view a feminized man. Like mm-hmm. when I think of feminized, I think of more submissive and more, truly feminine that's not appealing I think what's appealing about a man to most women including the bad boys by the way I always say they don't want to get cheated on but they want someone who's going to be authoritative that has a dominant strain to him somebody's going to be dominant in the bedroom most women don't want a submissive in the bedroom Uh so I think you know to advise men to be feminized as if that's going to somehow get them more women, I think that's bad advice. It's I think not it, the masculinized. I think most men probably have about an appropriate level of masculinity. As long as you're a man and you've got testosterone and biologically you're all there, you probably have an okay amount of masculinity. I think the two things you generally work on is a little bit of femininity in terms of like being able to communicate, be emotional, but it's probably the maturity aspect. But it's testosterone like sure is, from a lot of guys, testosterone oh, is on the decline. Not. It is absolutely it's, on the decline. And you don't think you often, I mean, I, when you- I have very low testosterone. Testosterone. Maybe that's obviously or whatever. But like, I think that it, relatively speaking, in terms of like success, leadership, in terms of like uh, uh, like being horny as fuck, in terms of doing all these things, like I think I'm a relatively masculine person. I don't know if like the testosterone level falling by one percent is going to be like, uh, oh my god, like everything is over. I mean, for, like, I, I really see a society mm-hmm. that it loads masculinity as women oftentimes crave it. I mean, I think women like, I mean, women generally do like, we talk about muscles and all that stuff. I don't know how you feel about that, but one of the reasons it's not aesthetics for us, it's really just sturdiness. It's like we're walking down a dark alley and somebody's going to be able to jump in and take care of things. It's strength. Women really appreciate strength in men. I totally Fortitude. disagree. If you're, if you're talking to women that are like looking for relationships, I, like it's nice to have those things. This is how I view it. I, there's like this maturity bubble that fills up like 90% of what a person is looking for. And then on the side, you've got like these very masculinized and very feminized traits. So like if you've got a guy that's meeting all these things for you and he's like really tall, he's got like really big muscles, that's a cool bonus, but it's mm-hmm. never selling you in a relationship. It's the same thing with a woman. If you've oh, got no, like it's not a gonna, woman who's like, oh. You're not a, a meathead that's blanket. Yeah, exactly, sure. No, those are, they're awesome bonuses because they accentuate the, the differences between us. Same thing with a woman with a really nice body or a woman who's like, like a 4'11", very short woman or a very cute woman. Like these are nice things, assuming all the other things are being met. Like mm-hmm. the feminine and the masculine, I think they're like the frosting on the top of the cake but people what do you fixate view, though? on these I'm curious things. because yeah. you and I have very different views before we close I'm probably going way over here Deli's going to kill me but Jed. oh we're oh, going to be sh- one minute oh, okay <laughs> we have to go oh my goodness um, do we do you have like a $50 super chat or anything big to read before <laughs> do we have anything big to read before no, no. no. okay Fucking all right losers. I didn't even realize what time it was see <laughs> okay, it was sorry. such a good conversation that I completely forgot about what time it was